In this video, we will show you how to replace your intake manifold on this Dodge Dakota. This will be mounted directly to the top of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing I want to mention is we will be dealing with chemicals such as fuel and coolant. Now with that said, let's make our way over to the driver's side fuse box. Turn this counterclockwise and remove the cover. Now once you have that off of there, we're going to be looking for our fuse that says fuel pump. You can see right down along here, it's fuse number 18. Now we'll make our way over to the legend. You can see right over here, I have that clearly marked as well. Now let's have a look at the fuses themselves. Take hold of your fuse removal tool. We'll come right over here. Now if you were to look at this line of fuses, you'll find that you have a blue 15 amp fuse and then one more fuse towards the front of the vehicle is a yellow 20 amp fuse. That's the one for the fuel pump. We'll use our tool, grab onto that fuse and remove it. Give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Now with that out of there, we're going to get inside the passenger compartment and attempt to start the vehicle. What you'll probably find is that the vehicle does start and then stalls out or it doesn't start at all. Now that we've evacuated the fuel pressure, put back your fuel pump fuse. We'll also make sure we put away our tool and reinstall the cover. Now on our battery, we have a very strange setup here, but essentially as long as you disconnect the cable from the battery terminal, you should be good to go. For this, I'll use two 12 millimeter wrenches. Set that aside so it's making no contact with the battery terminal. Now let's make our way over to the radiator cap. Make sure it's cool to the touch. You never want to open this if it's hot. Press it down, turn it counterclockwise, remove it from the radiator, making sure you lift it up and away from your face. Give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now let's make our way underneath the front of the vehicle with a collection receptacle. We're going to start draining the coolant. For this, you'll find that you have the drain on the bottom of the radiator. Let's turn this counterclockwise to start loosening it and drain the coolant. Now that that's done draining, let's close this and remove our coolant receptacle. Let's make our way over to the air filter housing. On this, you'll find that you have three clips holding the top to the bottom. Once you have that broken free, make your way to the back side of the air filter housing. You're going to find that you have a breather hose. Take hold of that, give it a little wiggle and remove that. Make sure it's soft and pliable. Now we can follow the inlet tube to the air temp sensor. We'll give this tab a little squeeze and pull it off. Quick inspection for corrosion. We'll set that aside. Just below that, you'll find that you have a 10 millimeter headed bolt. Remove that bolt. At this point, we can start removing this from the engine. We'll grab onto the top area of the air filter housing and dislodge that. Now we can take hold of this. We're going to lift it up a little bit and remove it from the engine. Set that aside. Let's remove the air filter and give it a quick inspection. If it looks like it's dirty, now's a perfect time to replace it. Set that aside. Now that we have that off there, it's important to make sure that you don't have too much debris on top of the engine because as we start taking things apart, you want to make sure that nothing falls inside. If you need to, you can use a little bit of compressed air. Try to make sure nothing goes inside of this area. Continue on with the trim tool. We're going to come right in between this area and separate it from the throttle body. Once you have that separated, make your way to the electrical connector. You'll find that you have two locking tabs, one along the top and one along the bottom. Give those a little squeeze and separate it from the throttle body. Quick check for corrosion and set that wiring aside. Continue on to removing your throttle body from the intake. You'll find that you have four 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts holding it in place. 
one on each corner. Set your throttle body aside. Once the throttle body is out of the way, continue on along the driver's side of the intake. You'll find that you have two rubber hoses, one held on by a clamp and one's just pressed in position. Remove the pair. For the clamp, we'll use some pliers, give it a quick squeeze, and slide it down the hose. Take hold of that hose, give it a little twist to break it free, and separate it from the intake. Give it a quick squeeze, make sure it's soft and pliable, set that aside. Continue on to the rearward hose. We'll grab onto that, give it a little tug. Quick squeeze, set it aside. Make your way to the other side of the intake and you'll find a 10 millimeter headed bolt holding the oil dipstick tube to it. Remove that bolt. Now let's pay attention to our coolant tubes. You'll find that you have an eight millimeter headed bolt holding a bracket to the top of the intake. Let's remove that. Follow those coolant tubes all the way up to the hoses that lead to your heater core. On each of these, you'll find that you have a clamp. You're going to squeeze it, slide it out of the way, and remove the hose from the coolant tube. Use some pliers for this. At this point, I'll use a pick to break the hose free from the tube, being careful not to damage the hose in any way. Do the same to the other one. Now we can move these tubes out of our way. Along the front of the intake, you're going to find your MAP sensor. On this, you'll find that you have a red locking tab. Use a small screwdriver or pick to lift up on that locking tab. Once you have it unlocked, continue on to your little squeeze tab. We'll squeeze this in. Give this a tug. Quick check for corrosion. Set that aside. Move along to your coolant temp sensor. For the coolant temp sensor, we'll continue with our angled pick. You'll notice all along the top of the sensor harness here, there's a red locking tab. We're going to have to try to get underneath that and gently lift it up to the unlocked position. And then we can squeeze the tab and lift the entire wiring harness off of it. There we are. Let's move along the top of the AC compressor. We're going to disconnect the electrical connector. For this, you have one locking red tab. Pry that out of place. Once you've done that, continue on to the squeeze tab and separate this. Quick check for corrosion. Set that aside. Now let's continue over here and dislodge the wiring harness from this stud. Let's use a small prying device for that. Now that we have that out of place, let's continue on with our trim tool. We'll come right down inside this area and separate the wiring harness from the valve cover. And just pry that right up, make our way down to this one. We're doing this to give ourselves a little bit more slack with that wiring harness. Now let's follow that wiring harness on top of the intake. You'll find that you have a clip here. We'll pry that out of the way. Now let's move along to our ignition coil. We'll grab onto this little tab, give it a squeeze, pop it off. We'll move along to each of the ignition coils along the passenger side, doing the same thing. Now 
Now we can move to the other side of the ignition coils and remove the spark plug wires. Give them a quick check for corrosion. Set those aside. Now let's move along to the fuel injector wiring. You'll find that you have a bracket. We'll use our trim tool to separate this from the fuel rail. Follow that wiring down to your two forward fuel injectors. To remove this, we'll use an angled pick to lift up on our red locking tab. The next thing you would want to do would be to squeeze on on your black tab here and lift this up and out of position. Now I'll use my trim tool to separate this from the fuel rail. With that wiring separated, we'll move back down to our two rearward fuel injectors. Now we can make our way up to this area. We're going to dismount the wiring harness from the top of the intake. We'll just pry that out of place. Now we're going to start removing the ignition coils. Before you do, it's important to take note of exactly where each one of them is. Use something to mark these. Now I'm gonna mark the first one with a one, the second one with two lines, third one with three lines, and the fourth one with four. Now we can start removing each of the ignition coils. You'll find for them, you have one 10 millimeter headed bolt holding each in place. That is a captured bolt, so you cannot remove it from the ignition coil. Take hold of that ignition coil, give it a little twist, and lift it up and out of place. Give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Do the same to all four down the line. At this point, we can move over to the other side of the engine and start disconnecting our wiring. Let's make our way right up to the alternator. For this, you'll find that you have an electrical connector that makes its way to the back with a red locking tab. Use a small pocket screwdriver to separate the red locking tab. Once you have that dislodged, continue on up along the top. We'll squeeze down on this and remove the wiring harness. Now let's follow that wiring harness down along the front of the engine. We'll start separating this way across the valve cover. At this point we have plenty of slack here. Now we can make our way this way. We'll start disconnecting the ignition coils. Now we'll start disconnecting the wiring harness from the intake. You'll find that you have a connector under here. I'll gently pry that out of place. Continue following that rearward. Now let's follow that wiring towards the back of the intake here. You'll find that it's mounted into the intake. Just pry that out of place. Continue on to disconnecting the spark plug wires from each of your ignition coils. Now let's move to the fuel injector wiring harness. We'll pop this off of the fuel rail bracket. After you've done that, disconnect each of your forward fuel injectors. Continue making your way back on the fuel rail. We'll dismount this.
Now we can disconnect our last two fuel injectors. On top of the driver's side valve cover, you'll find that you have your PCV line that makes its way all the way over to the intake. We'll disconnect this using a pick. If you were to follow this pick along the back side of this line, there's a little tab that you can grab onto and gently pull it. That's going to separate this from the PCV valve. Once I have it off, I'll show you what it looks like. Now right there's the tab. I just came right along the back side here. You lift it up and away and it separates. Now we can wiggle this around a little bit and you can see exactly where it connects onto the intake. For this, you have a little black tab that we'll go ahead and push out of the way and separate the hose from the intake itself. Set that aside. Now we can move along to removing each of our ignition coils. We'll mark these just like we did the other side. I'll mark them with one, two, three, four down the line and make sure that I keep them separate from the other side coils. Let's continue following that wiring harness back. We're gonna disconnect this electrical connector. We'll slide the red locking tab out of the way. Press down on this and separate it. Let's make our way over to where the fuel line connects onto the fuel rail. We'll dislodge the lock. Give that a quick inspection, set it aside. Now we'll use a 5 16 fuel line disconnect tool. Slide it over the fuel rail tube and into the line. Once you have it pressed up into the line, carefully grab onto the line itself and pull it away. Keep in mind there could still be a little bit of fuel in this area. Let's remove this plastic bracket from the top of the intake. For this, you'll find one 10 millimeter headed bolt. We'll set this aside. Now we can start removing our four 10 millimeter fuel rail bolts. You'll find two on each side of the engine. Now we're going to start carefully lifting the fuel rail and fuel injectors up and out of the engine. We'll use a pry bar up against the valve cover, being extremely careful not to damage anything. There's one side, we'll do the same on the other. Now we can remove the fuel rail from the top of the engine. Now let's make our way along the driver's side back of the engine. We're going to find that EGR tube. 
on this, you'll find that you have two eight millimeter headed bolts that hold the tube to the EGR. Let's remove each of those mounting bolts. One of them's a little bit hard to get to. All right, this one's almost out of here. You wanna be careful not to drop it on the back side of the engine. It's gonna be a little bit hard to find. That's one. In between the tube and the EGR valve itself, there is a gasket. There we go. Now we can take hold of the EGR tube and remove it from the top of the intake. out of here. Now let's continue on removing our last two 10 millimeter mounting bolts. There's one along the driver's back side of the intake and then one along the passenger side front. At this point we can continue removing the intake from the engine. This will be easiest if you can hold the wiring harness up and out of the way. If you want to, you can use a bungee cord to try to hold these cables out of the way. As we start pulling this out of here, be extremely careful that nothing falls down into your engine. That'll cause internal engine damage. Now that we have that done, let's continue on to cleaning up the engine, where the intake's going to sit. Looking along this area, you can tell that I still have a lot of residual debris. We want to make sure that we clean this up. When you do it, you can use a flat razor blade and gently scrape it. When you do that, you want to try to scrape it away from the holes that lead down into the engine, because any debris making its way into the engine could cause an issue. To help prevent debris making its way inside, We'll just take a rag, roll it up, and slide it into each of the ports. Once you have that in there, we'll do the same to all. Now that we have all of our ports protected, we'll continue on with that flat razor blade and clean off as much debris as possible. There's one, do the same to all. Now this looks pretty good. We'll continue on with a little bit of parts cleaner directly on a rag and wash this down so there's no oily residue. Now that I've completed this side, I'll do the exact same thing to the other side of the engine. Once you've done that, continue on to paying attention to each of the eight holes where your fuel injectors go into. It's important to make sure you clean those out so they're clean and free of any debris. For this, we'll use a nylon bore brush. Now when we're doing this, you also want to pay attention to the way that this is going to spiral. Because as we're turning this, we want it to actually lift the debris up and out, not force it down and in. So if we go clockwise, it's going to actually start pushing the debris into the engine. We want to draw it out by going in reverse. Now that we've done all eight of those, we can move along. Now let's make our way towards the backside on the driver's bank of the engine. Back to that EGR valve. 
make sure you don't have any of the old existing gasket on the EGR valve. It's a good idea to go ahead and replace that with a brand new one. Let's make sure we clean down the area on the EGR valve with some sandpaper. Let's have a look at the front of the intake manifold. You're going to find a seven millimeter headed bolt that holds the MAP sensor to the front of the intake. Remove that seven millimeter bolt. Now we can remove our MAP sensor. You will notice that it has a gasket on it. Double check to make sure it's soft and pliable. Give it a quick wipe. Assuming it looks good, we can set this aside. Now there's just a couple more things that we have to remove from the intake. You'll find that you still have two 10 millimeter headed bolts that are captured in opposite corners of the intake. We can easily remove these by prying them out of the way. You could use a trim tool or a small screwdriver. Give that a quick check, make sure it is still reusable, and set it aside. Do the same to the opposite corner of the intake. All right, friends, let's prepare our intake for installation. Take that map sensor and put it in position. You'll find on the intake you have this alignment tab and an alignment stud. Let's press this into position. Once you feel as though you have it bottomed out with the intake, continue on to starting in your seven millimeter headed bolt, snug it up and torque that to 25 inch pounds. Now we can continue on to installing our two corner mounting bolts. You wanna make sure you put those into the same ears as when you had removed them. We'll put this one in the opposite corner. Let's get back over to the engine. As you remember, we put rags inside of each of the eight ports leading down into the engine. When we cleaned down the engine, it's possible that we got a little bit of debris sitting up along the top here. Use a vacuum cleaner and remove as much of the debris as possible before removing the rags from each one of the ports. Now we can carefully remove each of our eight rags from the engine ports. Once you have them out of there, just double check to make sure that there is no pieces of any of the rags inside any of the ports. If you leave anything in this area, it will get drawn into the engine and cause catastrophic damage. Carefully put your intake in place on top of your engine. We'll wiggle this around so we can align both of those corner mounting bolts that we had in place in the manifold. Start those in by hand so you're sure they're not cross-threading into the engine. We are not going to tighten these yet. We're only starting them in. There's this one. That's a couple good threads. We'll do the same to the other corner. Now it's time to pay attention to the fuel rail and each of our fuel injectors. Let's have a look at the fuel injectors here. You'll find that on the area that goes down into the engine, you have an O-ring. Typically, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace these. Whether you're replacing them or not, it's always a good idea to go ahead and wipe them down and give them a close inspection. We wanna to try to remove as much debris as possible. We'll 
We'll just make sure that each of these seals are still soft and pliable, assuming you're not replacing them. Do the same to all. Let's bring that fuel rail into position. Align each of your fuel injectors with their corresponding holes. Press this side down as far as you can. Do the same to the other side. Now we can install our EGR tube. We'll take this and put it in position along the back side of the engine. Once you have it back there, slide it into the intake. Now I'm gonna to have to get my hands back there and you're not gonna be able to see much. But what we need to do is put our gasket in between the EGR tube flange and the EGR. Align the mounting bolt holes and slide the bolt into position. Make sure you start each of them in by hand before you snug either of them. All right, got both of those bolts nice and tight. We can move along. Now that we've done that tube, let's make our way to the fuel line. Reconnect that to the fuel rail, listen for a click. Once you feel that click, give it a tug. Try to pull it off of the fuel rail. You want to make sure that it does not come loose. That's very important. Once you've done that, continue on to your lock. You'll find that you have an angled area. That angled area goes up inside the fuel line. Once you have it in there, swing it down and lock it into position. Retest that fuel line one last time. It's important to make sure that it is secure so you do not have a fuel leak on top of your engine. Now it's time to install our ignition coils. When we put these in place, you want to make sure that you put them in order as when you had removed them. We'll start with the number ones across the front here. I'm going to do one side and we'll do the same on the other. Slide it right into position. Press it down. Start in each of the mounting bolts by hand. We are not going to snug these or torque them yet. Do the same on the other side. Now that we have all of those mounting bolts started, it's time to start snugging them and torquing them. It's important to make sure that we snug and torque these in a specific order because these also hold down the intake as well. When we do this, we're going to start from the center and make our way towards the front and back in a crisscross manner. This one's a little hard to get to. Now we'll make our way to the two back bolts here. Now we can put in our four 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts for the fuel rail. Now that we have each of these mounting bolts snug, torque them to 100 inch pounds. Torqued. Continue on to your spark plug wires. We'll press those right onto the ignition coils. Same on the other side. Move 
along to installing your breather tube. We'll bring it right down to the back side of the intake here. Slide it into position. Listen for a click to make sure that is completely secured. Let's connect this in as well. Now let's start setting the wiring harness down into place. We're going to leave it loose while we continue connecting our electrical connectors. For each of the connectors, if they have a red locking tab, it's important to make sure that you press them in, listen for a click, and then lock it in by pressing in on that locking tab. We'll start with the EGR valve all the way on the back on the driver's side here. This can be a little bit hard to get lined up. Let's just lock that in. Connecting in our ignition coils. While we're over here, let's also do our fuel injectors. Press them in, lock it in with the red locking tab. Press it in, listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's completely secure. Do the same to this one. Secure that wire. Secure this wire as well. Continue securing that wire and harness. Connect in the alternator. Resecure our wires. Reconnect your AC compressor. Make your way to the MAP sensor. Now we'll make our way all the way down to the coolant temp sensor. Lock it in with the red locking tab. Now let's reattach our oil dipstick tube. Let's move to the front passenger side of the intake and reinstall our plastic bracket. Get that in position, start in our 10 millimeter headed bolt and snug it up. Now we can start reattaching our coolant hoses to the coolant tubes along the driver's side rear of the engine. You want to make sure you slide the hose all the way up to this bezel. There we are, there's one. Do the same to the other real quick, then we'll slide the clamps on.
Make sure both of those are secure. Continue on to your 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts for the mounting bracket. Let's continue on with our vacuum hoses. Slide that into position on the intake, making sure that it is secure. Also connect it into its mounting point along this bracket. Time for the vacuum booster hose. We'll slide that onto the intake as well. Put the clamp in the original position. Now it's time to install our throttle body. We'll take this and put it in position. Start in all four of our 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts, snug them up and torque those to 65 inch pounds. When we snug these, let's do it in a crisscross manner. Secure this wiring harness. Continue on to your air filter. Now we can start putting this back together. Let's pay attention to the air filter housing. On this, you're going to find that you have several tabs that come out of the top area of the box, and on the bottom, you have several slots. Align those, slide them into place. Once you have that in place, go ahead and swing this down and latch it in. Attach your breather hose. Now we can finish sliding this into position. Lock it down. Now that we have that pressed down, let's move over to the other side of the intake. We'll put in our 10 millimeter headed mounting bolt and snug that up. Make sure this is nice and secure. Move along to your air temp sensor. Now let's continue on filling the cooling system. For this, it's a good idea to use some sort of funnel so you can burp out any air in the system. We'll make sure that we use the proper specified coolant. Make your way back over to the negative battery terminal. We'll reconnect that. Your setup's probably gonna look a little different than this. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now the next thing that you'll wanna do is hop inside the passenger compartment, start up the vehicle, and put your heat temperature on the high range or the hot range. Let the vehicle run for a little while. Pay attention, making sure that you burp out all the air from inside the system and there's only coolant in here. Make sure there's warm air coming out of the vents. After that, go ahead and turn off the vehicle and make your way back out here. Now that we've burped out all the air from in the system, reinstall your radiator cap. Okay friends, we've got the vehicle back together. At this point, go ahead and close the hood, hop in the vehicle and take it for a road test. Make sure you don't have a check engine light and no coolant leaks. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.